Thank you. So I will start with a quick introduction, uh, just to a few more details. I'm also an open source enthusiast, and uh, I've been working with open source almost since I work with software. And although I'm uh, working in management, I am still writing code, and I hope to do it forever. And Today, I'm going to start with this challenge of managing infrastructures and why that is hard. In uh, most companies, especially on corporate environments, you tend to have a lot of things to deal with in terms of diversity of the infrastructure itself, the number of servers you need to deal with, the type of servers. Many times you need to run things between private cloud, public cloud, on-premise data centers. And uh, putting all this together can sometimes become really hard to manage. Also, uh, on most companies, uh, security and compliance are concerns that you have to deal with. And this is where uh, Uyuni can help. So Uyuni is an open source tool that was developed at SUSE for managing uh, data centers and uh, ma doing that on different landscapes. It, uh, it can save you a lot of time, and it does this by mostly automating uh, part of the work, ideally a lot of the work. One thing uh, that is the basis of it is the ability to easily create and mirror software channels so that you can distribute packages and patches. Uh, also, automating configuration so that you can define configuration in a way that is repeatable and that you can apply configuration profiles to certain machines on your infrastructures or, or groups of machines. And uh, it also automates uh, things like monitoring, which is quite important on any data center that is big enough, even on small ones, I would say. So. Uyuni project started uh, as a fork of Spacewalk. So Spacewalk is a project that started at Red Hat in 2008. Suze became a contributor in 2010. Initially, it supported only Red Hat systems and variants of those systems like CentOS and Fedora. And the main reason why we forked the project is that uh, it entered uh, maintenance mode. So since Red Hat moved uh, towards different technologies like uh, Bob, Foreman, and so on, which are the basis for uh, their Satellite 6 product, Spacewalk entered maintenance mode. So they were only accepting bug fixes upstream, no clear plans for the future. Uh, they would not accept any major changes, and we wanted to introduce something, uh, or a few things actually, that were a bit disruptive. So why do we name the project Uyuni? It was after this concept, so uh, Uyuni is the uh, biggest uh, salt flat in the world. And why salt? Because it's one of the things that we introduced in this project, the support for the salt framework. So I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about uh, what SALT is and how it works a bit later. So Uni, apart from using SALT, has some other things on top of Spacewalk, like support for container building and Kubernetes integration, content lifecycle management, which is mainly the ability to define repositories per environment, so you can have your development environment, your QA environment, your production environment, or whatever number of environments you want, each one with a set of software repositories, and you can promote things from one set of repositories to another, so that you can have things being tested on a certain group of servers and then promote that to the next group and so on. Also, uh, we have introduced a few improvements in the code base. We have introduced rolling releases and improved documentation so that it's easier for the community to contribute. So SALT, uh, SALT, it's, it's the, the basis or it's the, the backend system for, for Uni and it's mainly uh, used for data-driven orchestration. So it allows remote execution and configuration management of any platform. Mainly anything that uses or is able to run Python is able to run SALT. So although we still do not support all the client types yet, SALT itself supports any system that runs Python. It's built around an event-driven architecture, so it's quite scalable. There are scenarios where you have above 30,000 machines on a single server being managed by a single SALT server, which is called the SALT master. So it scales very well. 
and it's extensible and customizable and you have it available at Ubuntu Universe and it's I would say available on any Linux distribution I know. A bit more on the salt concept so as you see here uh, salt works in a distributed event driven way so the systems that are being managed are the ones that connect to the master so the master has an event bus and on each system you say where the master is and they automatically connect to the master and become part of the catalog and then you can run commands on those systems using examples like this so you use a regular expression to define which systems you want to target and you can do that based on the system name on whatever hardware the system has so there is this concept of what they call salt grains which allow you to filter which systems you want to apply a certain rule to so it's quite powerful and flexible you can use regular expressions everywhere and you have a set of commands that you can use and this is just about the execution models there's a lot more to salt as you see on the right side this is an example of a salt state so it's a declarative way of defining what you want to have on a certain machine or group of machines. This salt state that we see here defines that on this uh, example we want to have Apache installed, the service running, we have an HTML file here that we can choose to, to deploy for example, and we can add many many more things. It's a uh, super, uh, comp not complex, I would say comprehensive uh, way of uh, doing management because you have lots and lots of options. I will later show you some examples of how those states work with uh, a bit more, uh, with a more uh, extensive situation. Uni is based on SOLD, as I mentioned. Uh, we added uh, some things on top of that, like the concept of uh, action chains. You can define certain actions, you can group those actions and schedule their execution on a certain moment in time. It supports management of systems on public clouds, whatever public cloud you want. KVM virtualization as well. It is able to perform CVE audits, although this is still not available on Ubuntu because it depends on patch management. It's something we are working on and we expect to have in the upcoming months. And it also automates the configuration of Prometheus monitoring. Next, uh, things we are working on. So patch management and CVE audit on Ubuntu systems, as I mentioned, uh, management of IoT devices, log management. Uh, we are evaluating uh, both Grafana Loki and the ALK stack to be integrated in the product. We'll have a public CI soon so that community can have a development environment complete. And in terms of wish list, well, we need contributors and we are looking for support on other based systems. Currently, Uyuni runs on OpenSUSE only, although it can manage almost any kind of system. The server still has to run on OpenSUSE. We want to uh, have this running on more systems and we hope to have contributions in that regard. If you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. Okay, and now I'll do a demo about how all this works in practice. Switch to mirror. Okay, so this is how it looks. This first page is an overview of what is happening on your data center. You'll see here if there are any warnings, any things that require your attention, list of recently registered systems. I have a couple of systems here for demo purposes. We have setups that have many thousands of systems with a single server, so it scales pretty well. 
here you can see uh, some informations like if systems are missing updates, if there is something that should be installed. Those systems were synced recently and I only have Ubuntu main repository here. One thing that is important to mention is that uh, we only create uh, repositories that are mirrors of your upstream repositories or your custom repositories. So you have a local copy of those repositories, which uh, in a, a big uh, data center is quite useful. You can also use proxies to spread those repositories across the proxies and uh, make package installation much faster. You can look into the details of each system. You can see. About the repositories, uh, sure. is it automatically done or you have to like set up the mirror yourself uh, for that? Or is it like something being done automatically by Uyuni? Okay. You define the repositories and you can then apply that configuration to any system that gets onboarded mm -hmm. or based on a certain profile. So usually the initial setup is defined here. So you have a list of software channels. Yeah. And uh, it, a channel is mainly a, a set of repositories. It can be one or more repositories. This is a concept that uh, comes mostly from the Red Hat ecosystem, but uh, it's also applicable here. Mm -hmm. You have to define those manually because you need to know what you want to to provide to your to your systems. Yeah. But uh, then once they are created, the process of assigning those repositories to the systems is completely automated. Okay, and just another question now that we're talking about this. Can you, uh, can you actually have like uh, kind of a versioning on the repositories? Let's say that there's an Apache version, uh, just, just to simplify it. Let's say that you have an Apache uh, and you want to keep that version of Apache on your systems and you don't want to upgrade it. Or let's say you want to provide that version at a later stage uh, when it's not in the Ubuntu official repositories anymore, but you still want right. to provide it for whatever reason uh, to, 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 to your clients or to your, uh, to your servers. Uh, do you also provide that capability or you're mostly dependent on what is provided by upstream? Uh, yes, you can do that. You can freeze certain versions on certain repositories. We have a feature we call the content lifecycle management, which does precisely that. I have one example here. Uh, you can create this uh, content lifecycle environment and assign that to a certain repository. In this case, we see here the development repository when it was built and uh, some filters here that we can choose to, in this case, pick packages that come from a uh, uni base. And uh, we can then promote those to different environments. And if things change on the upstream repository, they won't change here unless we go there and promote. And this can be done for the wall repository, for a certain number of packages. And you can create custom repositories with packages on a certain version that you want to keep there forever, eventually. Yep. So it's uh, completely flexible in that regard. All right, thanks. So I was mentioning about systems and I was about to show you the system details. I have these five systems here. Let's look at one of them. So aside from all the basic details, you can see things like which packages are installed, you can install packages. You can see which software channels are assigned. You can do uh, configuration management. So uh, this supports something like defining a set of rules, creating what we call a configuration channel, and then assigning that channel to uh, a machine or a group of machines, which allows things like, for example, if I want to keep an Apache cluster, I can define a configuration channel that configures that cluster and I just need to add that channel to any new machines that I onboard and they'll automatically get that configuration. So adding machines to a cluster can become quite easier. Other things we have here, uh, provisioning for example, we can uh, start from bare metal, we can onboard uh, virtual machines groups. We see here that this is part of this group so we can have systems in groups and operate on top of groups and all things, uh, all the concepts here apply to, to groups as they do to individual systems. States, 
for example, are uh, what I mentioned before, the concept of salt. And here we see what we call the high state, which is the default state for this machine. This can also apply to groups where we see what is the default configuration that we want to have on this machine. We see things here like, okay, we want to have these packages installed, we want to have a certain number of repositories configured, and we can apply that high state whenever we want, or we can schedule it, we can do a recurrent high state application so that machines are always according to a certain profile that we define. We also have what we call formulas. So formulas are a concept of salt, and uh, whenever we define a formula, which is mainly a state that is configurable, it takes parameters, uh, it, uh, it is able to generate a UI to configure that formula. So we see here, for example, if I click on the DHCP formula, I'm not going to apply it because I don't want this machine to be a DHCP server for now. I'll just show you what happens here. So this UI is completely generated based on the formula. So you can define formulas in a declarative way, and you'll have this form here generated that will allow you to configure the formula and you can apply that formula to whatever systems you want. There is also here a list of events that happen on this machine, have a history so it's completely auditable. And now showing how this works a bit in practice. So if I go here, okay, already have this system selected. With the selected systems, even without creating a group, I can do certain automated things here. Like I can take these five systems, and let's say I want to install Apache on all those systems. I want to install Apache, and I want, and I want to start the service. I want to do it all. So I can go here to install a package. I will say that I want the package to come from Ubuntu main. Apache 2, I'll select Apache 2. I will not install the package right away because I want to add it to an action chain so that I install the package and start the service all at once. So I added this to my action chain. Now I'll take my five systems and I'll say I want to run a command here, which will be also add this to my action chain. I have it here. I have my two actions there. So I will schedule it. It will run right away. And as soon as it completes, I will have Apache running. I will open a shell to my server here to show you that. Hopefully I can do it from here. So on any of these machines, I should be able to get I can show it on a browser because this is uh, hosted on uh, a different host that uh, goes through an SSH tunnel. But as you can see, any of these machines are now replying on port 80 with the default Apache welcome page. And I can quickly remove Apache from them as well. I just need to go here to my selected systems, go to packages. And I will remove Apache and all its dependencies. In this case, I don't need an action chain. I will execute this right away. And soon, they will be gone. Yeah, none of my machines has Apache anymore. Any questions so far? OK, other things. We have support for uh, virtualization. Also some visualization here. 
you can see my systems here. This becomes a bit more fancy when you have a lot of systems. You can navigate to the systems, go to their details. Uh, virtualization support allows you to do all the life cycle on KVM machines. Since this is running on a VM itself, I don't have any bare metal host running an hypervisor to demo that now, but it works pretty well. Some other things, like you can use salt directly here. Let's say that I want to run a remote command just for the sake of demonstrating, demonstrating this, which can be, okay, what is running on, which OS is running on these machines. You see here, I'm targeting all. This is a uh, wildcard as you would use on any bash command. I will now run the command on all systems. You see the responses here. So you can run anything you want. Some other thing uh, we have introduced here, uh, which is configured via a formula, is monitoring capabilities. So for that purpose, I have a Prometheus running here and a Grafana instance as well. The server itself is monitored and we have this group here which now is empty because uh, monitoring is not active on any of my systems which will, will allow you to see what is going on on that system. We provide a set of uh, monitoring templates already that can be customized if you are familiar with Prometheus and Grafana that can be quite easy and I'll show you how this works. So I can go here to my group, let's see okay, which system I want to monitor. Let's start with my Ubuntu one. And to activate monitoring, I'll activate it here. You can also do this to, to groups. So you can activate monitoring and configure monitoring on uh, your data center all at once. There are some options here. Currently, we have Node Exporter, Postgre Exporter uh, ready to be configured via formula. You can add any exporter here. Okay, I will apply the high state as this works like any other thing here through an high state application. So it adds the monitoring component to the configuration and you just apply that configuration. Okay, this has been scheduled. So soon I would expect it to show up here. Okay, it's already here and it should already show in my Grafana instance as well. Okay, here it is, my Ubuntu one. And now I'll add another one. Ubuntu 2, so And soon it should be showing up here as well. Okay, it's already in Prometheus, starting to collect the first metrics. It's now up. Okay, and it should show up here anytime soon. In the meantime, I'll show you what we have on the server monitoring so you can know what is going on on the server itself. Uh, this is a basic dashboard that you can extend and customize for your needs. It has the basic things, CPU, network, disk, uh, some insights on uh, internal metrics that we have on the server itself. And if you have a more complex setup, it can also include the proxy. Okay, we have our second client here. So both Ubuntu 1 and Ubuntu 2 are now monitored. And this uh, can be put together with alarms. Also in an automated way, you can deploy the alarms all together on your infrastructure based on groups. So you can have settings for your web servers. You can have settings for your uh, servers running uh, the, your DNS cluster. You can do whatever you want and you can deploy those uh, alerting templates also via configuration management, which uses salt. So it will be as any other configuration that you can do on those systems. And in the future, we will look to extend this even more and have full support for all features on Ubuntu. As I mentioned, some of them are still not fully available on Ubuntu, but we are 
working on that. And back to the slides. Some community resources, uh, the project website, uh, GitHub project, Twitter, and uh, a mailing list that we are also maintaining. We also have an IRC channel, and we are looking forward to have more contributions. Questions? It has uh, many languages. I would say the uh, prevalent ones are Python and uh, Java, now with JDK 11. And, uh, what was the, the biggest uh, deployment that you have seen, like the amount of uh, agents or virtual machines and servers connecting to uh, the uni instances that you have seen? You mean in terms of size? Yeah. We have a few examples uh, of large scale. Uh, we have a big bank that has around 15,000 uh, 15, machines on a single server. We have uh, another company, uh, an automaker in Germany that has around 20,000 and we have a big customer in Russia that has 30,000. So uh, they run on a single server with some proxies for doing the uh, package mirroring but otherwise uh, it's working pretty well on those scenarios. Although our recommendation is officially is that we support around 15,000. All the other scenarios are still experimental and with some custom tuning to, to make that possible and with powerful machines for the servers. Um, you're saying single server, I imagine that you are hitting, all the machines are hitting it in one server at a time, uh, but I guess you have more servers in case that uh, that server fails, right? Uh, yes, we do have on those scenarios, uh, we have redundancy, but uh, there is a single server in place and then there is a backup server that goes in in case the primary one fails. But that is something you can do uh, on your own way, on your infrastructure. We are not providing any replication out of the box. It allows for that, it has APIs for that, but you need to configure it yourself. Okay, uh, because I'm, I'm not sure, maybe I missed it, but did you mention there, there's a database? Uh Running? Well, which one is yes, it? Yes, this uh, also has a database. It has a Postgre database, and you can also put some replication on that da database as well. All right, got you. So I think maybe just a front end database and then another front end database, then you already have replication uh, yes. set up. Yeah, for example, uh, it, also, uh, it can also store some uh, things like the salt states, although we support other things like GitFS. You can just have them on a file system, you can have branches for them and you can use uh, those as the basis for your configuration. So it's quite customizable in that regard. Gotcha. Thank you. Regarding monitoring, uh, you talk about Prometheus. Uh, it's just one example, or there are uh, any other uh, monitoring platforms uh, supported? Only Prometheus for now. We put our bets on Prometheus because it's becoming a kind of a standard in monitoring. It also goes pretty well with the event-driven architecture we have in mind for the product. It scales pretty well, so we are currently only looking at it. Uh, before, we uh, used to support uh, Nagius and all its variations, but uh, we got more traction with Prometheus. It's also growing a lot in terms of community. It's able to do many more things. It has a powerful query language. And given all that, we put all our energies on Prometheus. OK, thank you. Any more questions? OK, if not, I'm done. Thank you. Thanks.